Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiba, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of two books, Etiquette, The Least You Need to Know and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. For all those inquiring about my books, my books are only available in print in Azerbaijan. If you want to make an order, I'll link down in the description box an email address through which you can make your order. If you are a new viewer, welcome to my channel and please don't forget to subscribe. And if you're an old viewer, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about four self-care habits that I do for my body, mind and soul. So let's start with a self-care habit that I have for my body and that is drinking rose hip tea every single day. As a child, my mom gave us rose hip tea for the breakfast and I actually didn't really like it in the beginning because it has a very sour taste and not a kind of a taste that every child likes but I grew over time to love it and I love it so much now that I can't imagine a day without having a cup of rose hip tea and I actually now make my children drink it too in the beginning they weren't really liking it but now my oldest daughter is so used to it and now my son is going to like it as well so rose hip tea is actually super super rich in antioxidants it is very rich in vitamin c it is amazing for boosting your immune system it has no caffeine which is why it's so perfect for all age groups other health benefits of rose hip tea is skin rejuvenation as well as fighting inflammation and pain it's very very helpful for ladies especially during period cramps it helps reduce the pain and helps to get rid of inflammation it has a lot of lot of benefits and you can read up online all, all the benefits of rose hip tea and it is something you have to get used to it the taste of it but once you start getting used to it i'm sure you, you're going to be drinking it every single day as any natural remedy that has a lot of benefits rose hip tea also has its side effects and that is it will make you urinate frequently you have to keep it in mind because the time when you're going to consume it is going to be important it's best not to consume it right before bedtime for obvious reasons your sleep will be interrupted because you'll have to frequently visit the bathroom what i like to do is i like to prepare my rose heat tea before going to bed and i let it steep overnight and then i'll enjoy a cup either in late afternoon or after lunch how to prepare your rose hip tea it's actually super easy and very fast you have to take rose hip these are dried ones i run them under the water i wash them very very well thoroughly and then i take a heap of it put it into this thermos and then add some boiling water i'll close it tightly and let it steep like that overnight you can steep it for 10 to 15 minutes and drink it after immediately but i like when it's a little bit more concentrated so i'll leave it overnight and then i would add it uh, to my cup and then dilute it a little bit with uh, again boiling water and i'll just consume it like that i like when it's a little bit even more sour so the longer you leave it the longer it's gonna the more sour it's gonna taste um, i personally like it but if you don't like very sour flavor then you can just steep it for 10 to 15 minutes trust me this is the kind of a habit you would like to incorporate in your daily life as well it's easy to prepare and very good for your skin for your body for your overall immune system so make sure that you prepare rose hip and include it into your daily nutrition. Cheers! Speaking of a body, the second self-care habit that I have is preparing a homemade scrub for my body from my morning coffee beans. So every morning I freshly grind the beans, then I prepare myself a cup of coffee and after preparing a cup of coffee, I have some remaining wet uh, coffee beans here on a filter paper. What I do is I take them out and I empty them. So it should it trick it down like that. So I hold the plate like that and then I flip it. And then I just turn all the beans inside, empty. I try to get as much as I can because it's all about minimum waste and not letting anything remain there because I'll be using the scrub all over my body as well as my face. So once I've emptied this, I'll let it dry like that, air dry. So I'll leave it like that on a table for a day, day and a half, depends on how fast they dry, but usually a day and that's enough. If I want to speed up the process, then I'll put that on a special heater and it's gonna dry a lot faster. But I like air drying them because I have a lot of it. 
So this is already the morning coffee beans from yesterday that are already dry. I then empty them into this kind of a container that I store in my bathroom. So I want now to show you how I prepare a homemade scrub fresh every time I'm using it. So I apply scrub on my body two or three times a week and that depends on how my skin generally feels. Before taking a shower and knowing that I'm gonna have my scrub, what I do is I empty a little bit of the beans in here. This is like my container for preparing a very fresh scrub every time I'm using it. So I have some coffee beans here and then I will mix it either with salt or sugar depends on what I feel like. For some reason recently I've been loving the salt more than sugar but it's again up to you. So I'm using this um, this just crunchy or like larger not so refined uh, salt. So I'll add a little bit of salt and then I'll mix it up really well. So I'll take a spoon and then mix it up or just swirl it around like that and mix it up. I'll probably add a little bit more salt. And then right before, so I can store it like that as well. You can actually prepare your salt or sugar and, pre and hold it like that in a container and you can serve yourself anytime that you need. But I prepare it fresh and then depending on what I feel like, uh, it could be almond oil or coconut oil or maybe sometimes honey, I'll add some oil into it so and then I'll create this kind of a paste actually want to smell it I wish I could tell you guys how it feels in terms of the smell but it smells amazing so this is a kind of a paste that you're gonna get out of it and then right before taking a shower once you have already um, washed your body uh, it's wet then I'll apply the scrub all over my body and just massage myself in a circular motion and then rinse it off I guarantee you that when you use the scrub you're gonna feel a huge difference between those that you buy in the market and those that you prepare at home especially if you use good coffee beans and good salt and good oil your scrub is gonna be superb and a lot better than anything you can buy in store the third self-care habit that I have for my mind is writing out quotes early in the morning. The first thing I do once I take care of the kids, I come down, make myself a freshly brewed cup of coffee, and then I sit down, light up a candle or an incense, and then start writing quotes. I take about 10 to 15 minutes while enjoying my coffee. I will just write out all kind of quotes that I've been collecting, maybe from the books that I read, the journals, online sources, Pinterest, I sometimes, if I haven't found anything, I'll just Google, for example, uh, Japanese proverbs or Chinese quotes or quotes by someone that I like, and then I'll read through them and collect only the ones that speak to my heart. For me personally, this is a little bit of a ritual. It's like a meditation because at the time when I'm reading the quote and I'm writing it out, I'm just focusing particularly on this one activity. Also, I think knowing a lot of quotes uh, helps me to learn to speak better. If you look at the quote, they're quite usually uh, small in their length, uh, they're quite brief, uh, so it's about two to three lines, but the message is always so strong. So when I read through quotes, I learn to organize my thoughts in a similar way where I can actually narrow down the formulation, the sentence into in brief sentences and try to convey an important message. The other thing that I love about quotes, not only because it helps me to learn to speak better and be more eloquent and more concise in my wordings, but also I think of them as takeaway lessons from life. Um, people, quotes are usually about life or something that we have learned about life, about experience, about education, about anything. And these are usually conclusions people make about them. So for example, when you just read quotes by famous prominent people, you realize what was their takeaway lesson from life or from their experience. 
I personally really like quotes by Maya Angelou. I've collected a lot of them. And particularly one that really, really resonated with me is that people will forget what you did to them, people will forget what you said to them, but they will never forget how you made them feel. If you think about this quote tells you a lot about life, it teaches you that what you make people feel like around you is a lot more important than what you say and what you do. Actually, maybe what you do will make them feel a certain way, but rather you could do something nice, but if you're not making them feel comfortable or at ease or welcomed, um, they will have this sense of feeling of you know not being friendly around you not being at ease around you and they will remember you for that another quote that i really like about success is that a key to success is to start before you're ready i think a lot of us are always hesitant to start something because we feel like we haven't learned enough or we don't know enough about it don't have enough expertise and truth be told no one does before they actually start doing something um, this quote has helped me a lot when i was thinking about starting a youtube channel and educating people via youtube and i was hesitant about it in the first because i wasn't sure it was the right time if i was ready and then i just did it and i thought you know what i'm gonna give it a shot and try it and I did, and I'm really happy that I came across this quote that actually motivated me to get started. Another benefit of writing out quotes for me personally, for my mind, is trying to understand what am I experiencing emotionally, what's going on through my mind at the moment. First I collect the quotes and then I write it out in my notebook. And when I do that, I think to myself, why is it that I'm writing it out? Why does it speak to me so much? So when I'm thinking and trying to answer to my own questions, I understand what I'm feeling at the moment. I understand my internal thoughts. I'm understanding my emotional state. I'll give an example. About a year and a half ago, or maybe more, I came across this quote that said, choose day one or one day. And I always say that this is my favorite quote of all times. Uh, the reason it is my favorite one is because it, get me, it got me started. It got me thinking about my general attitude towards taking actions. Basically what this quote means is that you have to make a choice. For example, if you want to start uh, going to the gym, do you choose is it one day you're going to go to the gym or is it your day one of going to the gym? So basically instead of postponing your life, you're actually taking your first step towards the goal that you have. And this was at the moment when I had on my wish list to do YouTube videos, to have an open Instagram account. I was very hesitant about doing that because I don't like to expose much of my life. So it was a moment where I wanted to expose some of it, but not too much. So I was always hesitant and I couldn't decide. And when I came across this quote, I thought to myself, this is so true. Do I keep postponing it and having it on my wish or to-do list? Or do I just start one day and just get going? So whenever I write quotes out, I understand myself better. I help my mind, but also my soul. The fourth self-care habit that I have for my soul is dedicating an hour a day for doing whatever I want to do. I know we're all in this mentality, you know, that every hour should be productive, that our days should be productive, that we have to be always motivated to produce an output, that it has to be something that we can, you know, uh, get benefit from, uh, that is real. But sometimes I forget that we also need to feed our soul and to feed our soul, we just have to listen to our heart and just follow the lead that it takes us on. Uh, for me personally, allocating an hour a day to whatever I want to do, maybe it's just napping because I love napping, maybe it's dancing or maybe it's baking a cookie, whatever it is, I do it for myself. I don't do it because, you know, I have to dance because I have to work out because it's good for my body because I'm burning calories. No. If you have that mentality, then you're not doing it for your soul. You're doing it to be productive. You're doing it, again, it's beneficial to you. You're working out, it's good for your body, but it's not necessarily for your soul. Again, with the example of baking cookie, if all of a sudden you have this desire to bake a cookie to make you feel more relaxed, and if you do that, 
then it's for your soul. But if you have in your to-do list to bake cookies for your children or to bake cookies because you have a party to attend, it might not necessarily be always for your soul. So make the distinction, do I do it because I have to do it and I'm thinking, oh, this is gonna bring me this benefit or I'm doing it because I just wanna do it. So doing for the sake of I just wanna do it is doing it for your soul. Before deciding to allocate an hour for my soul, I was also in this mentality that every hour should be productive. And actually that wasn't a good mental state to be in because whenever I was doing something because I loved it, because I just felt like it was fun to do it, I then felt a lot of guilt about it. I was like, why am I dancing when I could be reading a book? Or why am I doodling because I could be doing something else with my time? And this really brought very uh, negative emotions in me towards the activity that brought me joy and then I was like I need to take a break and I need to allow myself to do something that makes me internally happy and allocating an hour I think is a good amount of time it's not too little not like 30 minutes but it's not more than an hour if you have the luxury of having to spend more time you can do so but at the moment I can't allocate more than an hour so hour is my maximum but I enjoy it so much that I think that one hour gives me energy for the entire day understanding that you have that one hour each day for something that you want to do that brings you joy that makes you happy actually puts you in a very good mental state because you are much more organized then. You know that you need to get your work done, whatever that you have to do, maybe study for an exam, maybe do your homework, um, maybe cook for the family, whatever it is that you have to do, you're gonna be more organized and more productive in whatever you're doing because thinking that then you have an hour to do whatever you want. I hope that you find the self-care habits interesting, useful, applicable in your daily lives. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!